this episode of Fourscore, we're going to dive into the masterpiece known as Sugar Hill. We're going to explore why this film is not only a classic, but cinematic art. Now, if you haven't seen this film yet, I appreciate you taking the time to click on my video, but in all honesty, it's not worth me ruining this film for you. It's important that you watch it before you watch my video. Put this on pause, go watch it on Amazon Prime, come back and we'll talk. Now for the rest of us. Let me break it down so it can forever and consistently be broke. Okay. Oh. It stars Wesley Snipes. Clarence Thomas, Teresa Randall, Steve Harris, and Michael Wright. So Romello and his brother Ray end up working for this Italian crime family that is also responsible for shooting his father when he was young. Romello is like a big time dealer in Harlem. Like he's no joke. So this newcomer is trying to get a piece of the pie. And in the midst of this, it causes friction between the crime family and this up and new coming drug deal. He then meets Teresa Randall's character, Melissa, and is now thinking about his life in a way that he never anticipated. Soon he's caught between the world that he knows and this new love that's making him see that there's a possibility for something better. I'm consumed by chaos. Consumed by guilt. Consumed by grief. May God forgive me. Romello is the main character in this film. He has experienced a lot of pain and trauma in his life due to his parents' addiction. He's torn between the life he has built, the family he has left, and wanting better for himself. In the beginning, the director beautifully shows that he is a god in his neighborhood, and yet he wants off his throne. Walking away from his own heaven and hell will force him to leave behind what he loves above it all, his father and brother. Romello struggles because of his guilt for what he does, who he's in business with. Partners with the same men that stripped away our family dignity and wanting different when his father and brother are in their own ways content with their chaos. Right he can't seem to convince them to want better. And for me to tell you it's time to go home. Go. Go where, man? What the fuck am I gonna do, huh? Where am I gonna go? What am I gonna do, huh? Be a garbage man, huh? Short order cook, fucking taxi cab driver, bank teller. I just can't stay around here anymore. I can dig it. You know, you can come with me. You know, we can start all over again, you know? From scratch. Leave Harlem. This is me, Romy. I am Harlem. He must choose whether to leave them behind or stand still with them. What about Ray Nathan? I will do anything that you want me to do. Save me the dream. Romello and Melissa were unexpected hope for each other. From the moment their storyline is introduced, you feel different about the world of Sugar Hill. Suddenly grief, pain, and acceptance of reality is not all there is. Suddenly dreams become capable of manifesting. The way that he looks at her and spots from the club, almost as if she can feel his eyes on her, the way she looks up at him, the music, the intensity of the stare, it's just magnificent how the camera zooms into them both as if no one else matters, they only see one another. It's so beautiful. The lighting, how there's so much gold around her and him in the lights, as if they've both spotted a treasure within each other. It's just perfection, it's the best scene. Let me tell you something. Huh? That's one nigga in here you don't want to get next to. Why not? 
because he's in the catering business. You hear me? What? I'm gonna put it to you straight. Huh? That nigga serves up more Heron in Harlem than McDonald's serves Hamburg. Stop lying. You tripping? Are you tripping? Mm-mm. I think I'm tri- what? I'm glad you came out. Well, I just didn't have nothing better to do. That's all. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do? I'm an actress. Really? Yes. What restaurant? <laughs> Melissa was a dreamer, and the very thing that frustrated her mother with her was essential to Romello. It just goes to show the very thing that someone else may not appreciate or understand about you can be the very thing that someone else may need from you. That's why it's important to just be who you are. Mama, 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 come on. I don't want you to get hurt. I just want you to get serious about your life and stop wasting time on chasing this illusion. Anything for you, Mama. Do you know what I would love to do? No. I would love to just go to the airport and hop on the first plane going anywhere. Any place to do, you know. Is that right? That's right. I just fly away and leave all this shit behind. And you wouldn't take me with you? <laughs> We were dreaming, right? You said it was if, if, if I could do. Yes, I take you with me. Ain't that something? Any place for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't you ever dream? Yeah, I dream. My dreams always kind of. So many dreams turned into nightmares. This film perfectly connects its dialogue to its storyline, which you would think is a given, but in a lot of films, they fall short. Here, he talks about how his dreams turned into nightmares, and it explains why he stopped dreaming. And Melissa, who ignited something into him, lets him know that it is possible to dream again and to make those dreams a reality. We are more than the hand we've been dealt. We are more than our struggle you know and our pain. I think I would like to get on that plane. There Matter of fact, I just buy the plane. Okay. Put a kid on it. You know what I'm saying? Kick my plane out. Yeah. Pimp it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to go back to see where my parents came from. That's a good dream. I like that. With this spotlight on him, she's able to see what's in his shadow. Now all that is hidden is shown to her. Her fear is such a contradiction to what she knows of him. When he tells her that she's the one, it's almost as if he's playing with her because she is his possibility for something better. She was the light at the end of the tunnel, the light in the darkness of his life. Because you're the one, that's why. You're the one. I just want to take a walk. I want to go to the movies. I want to go to amateur night, to Apollo, boo people, do shit that normal people do. What's so beautiful and significant about this scene is the fact that this is what he wanted most, to just blend in and just be a normal person. It's amazing what can happen when someone can give you hope. You don't want to let it go. You know that plane that you wanted to get yourself on? It's leaving tonight. We are on it. I'm Ray Nathan Scuzz. Ray Nathan. Can't you see I'm with the lady here? Little mom. You don't uh, raise up and step out of my motherfucking face. You're gonna catch a bad break because I'm gonna rain on your ass like white on rice. You know, those are the Nigerians I was telling you about, man. Them motherfuckers, they be getting their shit from Pakistan, right? They go to Lagos. They be bringing it over here in diplomatic pouches, man. They rocking the Bronx with that shit. Is that right? Funny. One time we used to look to him for our history and our culture. Yeah? Man, you want history and culture, you read National Geographic and shit. Yeah. You know something? I read this article in the Times today. It said that people like us should be placed in front of a firing squad and shot. Motherfucker that should be dying for you and stood up against the wall is Charles Oakley. Man, can't make a goddamn layup underneath the board by himself. Change that nigga. Ray Nathan is a very unique character. 
older brother to Romello, Ray Nathan's only contention other than his hatred for his father. This nigga ain't my pops, man. This motherfucker gave up the right to call himself that a long motherfucking time ago. And who gave you the right to decide that? Me! Fuck you. Yeah. You know when I decided, huh? When he put our motherfucking lives on the line. Is his disgust for working with Gus. Tell you, man, no, we get with these motherfuckers, man, we can get out of bed with Gus and the rest of them whop guinea motherfuckers, man, like a bunch of cheap $2 hoes. Ray Nathan is someone who craves power and control. He tries to emulate Romello's calm demeanor. This is my brother, uh, Romello, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a pleasure. I told I've you all about around. him. Yeah. How you doing? He's uh, so uh, his emotions get the best of him most times. Like Romello, Ray Nathan has experienced a lot of pain and witnessed a lot of tragedy because of their parents. The difference is he had more of a physical role in it than Romello, like when he had to tie the belt for his mother to take heroin. Why do I always have to do it? Why don't you never ask Romello? Because you're the oldest, sweetheart. <laughs> and your mama is sick. Or was beaten on the roof with his father. Being the eldest didn't come with the perks when Romello was his role model. In all my life, I looked up to you. How do you think that feel, huh? Always smarter than me. <laughs> you thought you looked better than me. You always said the right thing. I always, always said the wrong thing. <sighs> There's a part of him that wants to be like Romello, and another part of him that doesn't want to let him go. They provide safety, love, and understanding for one another. When going through trauma at a young age, there is a trauma bond that seems unbreakable between siblings that have experienced the same pain. Although Ray Nathan is very emotional, his need to be in some kind of control stems from when under his parents, he was unprotected. He yearns to not feel helpless again. And without Romello, he will be. Can I just? I just don't want you to go anywhere. You got this little cutie. Are you in love? That's good. But I don't even have that. I mean, I never, I never loved anybody, anybody wrong, except you. Like many great films that came before Sugar Hill and those that came after, using lighting and fashion to add to the scene, story, and characters is done all too well in films like The Godfather, Scarface, Mole Betta Blues, and most notably, Belly. A lot of times in this film, a white light represented truth, innocence, and or hidden things coming to light. Here, Melissa has an idea of why Romello isn't there and she knows that the truth is not good. Sugar Hill used its lighting to add to the story and message of the film. It added to the emotion. It also hinted at what was to come within a scene. The hints of blue lighting when there was a scene that was melancholy and involved death. The blue lights on the buildings look at the end of the street the blue light shining on her window as romello is there to tell her the news of her husband 
I noticed that the baby wore a green jacket and when Romello goes to see his father for the last time, there is a green jacket hanging up. To me, it seems the shared devastation of that baby losing its father and Romello losing his as well. Barry Michael Cooper is known to have dialogue in his films that are not only genius, but influence the culture. Sit your $5 ass down before I make change. That line was so cold that it inspired a scene on Martin. Sit down. Play again, Go man. sit your $5 ass down before I make change. <laughs> this ain't business, bitch. This is personal. And one of my all-time favorite lines. I want to shoot you so bad. My dick's hard. Coming here are some of the greatest lines in Sugar Hill. This is Harlem, motherfucker. The only motherfucking piece they understand up here is nine motherfucking millimeter. This is the flavor that they savor up here, neighbor. You don't hit my men, I won't hit your men. You don't hurt my brother, and I won't take your whole family. Okay, chump? I mean, chat. My word is barn. You playing yourself, Ray. No, you playing yourself, Rome. Because it don't matter where you go, what you do, or what you know, you still a nigga. <coughs> hey, man, you all right? Yeah. Sure. So why don't you just do us all a damn favor and die? What do you want me to do? You want me to kill myself, Ray? I'm already dead. It would require me to post the entire movie since every scene was at its best. Instead, here's a few great scenes in Sugar Hill. This scene is so beautiful that I don't even want to talk too much through it. From the scenery, the way that the camera pans left and they're walking into the frame, the way that the music is, which shout out to Terrence Blanchard who composed the music for this film. Also what is really beautiful is how the music is kind of louder than their dialogue. And so in the moment, you can just tell that they're just in the moment and it's just perfection. This is when you kind of get to see Romello let his guard down a bit. And then for Melissa, who's very much a dreamer, it's like this is the moment when they're both able to have the freedom to be present with one another and learn about each other. Get that serious draw. You're making fun of me? You're making fun of my walk? you making fun of me? No, I'm like, no. It's smooth, just kind of glide. In this scene, Romello goes to visit Gus after losing someone very close to him. His world is starting to crumble around him and yet he is so calm and collected. This scene tells a lot about Romello and Gus, how they both operate and the respect and disturbance that they both have for each other. They both hold something over the other's head. Not easily rattled, Romello stands face to face with Gus eating grapes. It is not until Gus brings up his father Arthur Romello. that Romello's true weakness Your and vulnerability father. is shown in his body language. It's in this scene that it's shown the key to the vault of Romello's emotions is his father, Arthur Romello. The trauma of his father's assault with Sal and Gus still very much has a hold on him. Dear Barry Michael Cooper, what came over you to create this masterpiece? After putting up a small review for this film, I received the surprise of my life when Barry himself commented on my video and told me his inspiration for writing Sugar Hill.
It's not your fault. You can't fix it. I... I just want you to be proud of me. Sell us this time, Harry. Money. Actually, it's a very good film. What's really interesting is that each character had something, a connection, a tie to something that was going to be the end of them. For Ray Nathan, it was his lifestyle in terms of the streets. For Romello, it was his family. And for his father, it was his addiction to heroin. They all had something that was pulling them to the grave. To the writer, director, actors, stylists, lighting, sound producers, hell, even the extras and craft services, to all involved in the creation of this cinematic art, thank you for creating a piece that has become a part of my blueprint in life and creativity. Forever inspired by all of you, may God's grace unwaveringly flow over your hearts, lives, spirit, and work. I would also like to thank all who have watched my very first episode of Fourscore. Until we meet again, like this, I hope. Thank you for tuning in.